Just look at this guys, it's absolutely just beautiful. It's stunning. I mean, we had the anchorage to ourselves for, um, well, most of the day actually, but two boats have come in here and then a lot of boats have uh, anchored up around the corner there, which is also a popular anchor spot. So I guess all the people that have rocked up today knew that there was gonna be quite a bit of swell last night, but on the upside, we got here very, very fast. I mean, we averaged yesterday over eight knots. We were sometimes pushing nine and a half knots put, uh, getting here with that code zero, and we got here super fast. I mean, I think we did 60 nautical miles in like, eight hours or less less than it was uh, it was a really good really good passage tonight though we're gonna make our way down to visby look how calm it is compared to last night it's like completely different it's like an absolute mill pond it's so glassy out here now perfect conditions to sail i mean <laughs> not right but this is the consequence of um Sailing to a schedule, never sail to a schedule. But I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a really beautiful night to uh, possibly motor, maybe sail, we'll see. Go, go, go. Goodbye, Kotska Sandin. I'd love to stay another night, but uh, yeah, got things to do. It's so beautiful tonight. There's a lot more sailing boats actually come in uh, over today, 11 or 12 sailing boats. They're all taking opportunity of the no swell, no wind situation. You know, that's about the only time you can come out to this island is when it's favorable conditions. The holding is pretty good though. Many people have said, you know, well, it's sand out there and you're going to have anchor problems and whatever. Well, to be honest, sand is just about one of the best anchor conditions, right? In my opinion. Well, mud, then sand, I guess. And then the worst is like rocks and weed. But um, yeah, we didn't have any problems at all. Off into the sea we go. Unfortunately, we can't sail, but we can still enjoy this magnificent okay. sunset. It goes so fast. I'm always amazed how fast sunsets are. It's, it's incredible. You look away, and then it's almost gone. One good thing about installing this 4G antenna on the mast is, you know, I get to watch YouTube but the middle of the night basically while we're motoring across the Baltic and it's it's just an awesome speed actually so um, on the internet so I, I can just do anything I want like that really just surf the internet and do some work and download some videos to the laptop and all that kind of stuff so that's what I'm doing right now. Got Skasandan leaving that behind now it's a bit later on and we've put the mainsail up and we've put the code zero up as well at night I'm a bit dubious about flying this code zero but the winds are predicted to be so light and there's only a very limit limited opportunity about now to be honest to catch some wind on the way to Visby so I'm taking full advantage of that because very well come morning we're gonna have no wind and then we put the motor on again but at least we would have made some distance but I'm just being very careful now with this code zero and making sure that I'm ready to um, get the sail in if necessary and doing all the preparations making sure all the lines are on the right winches everything like that um, it's pulled in very tight at the moment now we're very close hauled I can't really show it to you because it's very dark out there and I haven't got a night vision camera but um, yeah that's the way it is we're doing uh, yeah five knots um, heading of 220 degrees and then you can see on the iPad 
yeah got a fair distance to go 42 nautical miles to go so we should be there in the morning at this rate and that should be good Tanya's just going down to get some sleep now um, so I'll take the first shift because I think the winds will be higher on the on the first shift a bit and she's not that comfortable with the code zero yet and it's understandably so I'm not really that comfortable with it yet so that's why I'm being super careful with it so far and I'm like I said I'm a bit reluctant to have it right out right now but yeah she'll uh, she'll get some sleep now and then yeah come uh, later in the night then I'll get my head down as well see how it goes just coming up to midnight now and we're making pretty good progress actually I'm keeping the boat sailing we're very tight to the wind at the moment the winds doing six or seven knots and we're doing five and a half so that's it's pretty goddamn good to be honest I was beginning to think actually that the AIS wasn't working but as you can see just on the map I've just got a target popped up there some uh, some ferry uh, down here so that's good to know that it's all working because as we approach Visby uh, down here all of the ferries are going to start coming in uh, from Nunes Ham. There might not be that many during the night but there'll be one or two and some of them are quite fast so I just need to watch out for those guys. It's two in the morning and uh, I'm getting pretty tired now um, but the, as usual you know with a clear sky in the Baltic at this time of year. The stars start to come out because it's no longer light all night. Um, you can see the sun sort of go down in one part of the sky and then the light moves across to the other part of the sky. I'd love to show you that, but it just doesn't show up on camera. It's really beautiful, but uh, there's a, a big moon behind me right now, all the stars out. Gotland is uh, coming up on the front port side um, so yeah we're making good progress the winds are dropped off now though uh, the winds are down to like four or five knots but we're maintaining like three and a half maybe four knots sometimes so it's a bit slow which means we'll be there probably at nine or ten o'clock in the morning but um, yeah just about to go and wake Tanya up and um, yeah she can do a, a couple of hours I think Good morning, awake again. Tanya took quite a long shift actually. Probably, I think it was about three and a half hours before I woke up and, uh, and come up again. So thank you, honey, for long shift. Like I said before, this Code Zero is an absolute star. It's kept us going all the way through the night, even in the very light winds and can pretty much go as high as the jib. It's, it's such a good sail. Wind's doing three and a half knots and we're doing 4.2. Anything below four knots, when you start going to three and a half, three knots, it gets very frustrating and it gets very hard not to switch the engine on. So um, yeah, I'm really glad to save the engine hours and to save the diesel. One useful little tip I have is to buy some sort of a multi-tool. Um, I've got myself a Leatherman Wave down here. And what that allows me to do on like passages like this is just if there's any screws or any bolts or anything like that that need to be nipped up I can just go and grab the multi-tool and just go and take care of some things it's it's super useful actually you know what I hate is having to get the whole toolbox out just to nip up like one screw or something so just a leather man with a bunch of uh, bits on super useful to have on a boat that's for sure I'm rambling on just gonna uh, enjoy some breakfast in a minute and then get into Visby What's wrong with my sock configuration? Hmm? No? Are you kidding me? 
Are you kidding? No long socks with shorts no, and. No. <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you how many level it's wrong. Of. <laughs> is it um? Is it almost as bad as socks and sandals? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, however, that's worse. You beauty. Thank you for tonight, Code Zero. We've got to name this sail, honey. I don't know what to call it yet. So guys, I think we've come to the end of the sail today, actually. We've, we've just ran out of wind. Come on, pull it like you mean it. Come on. If you're flying a drone from a boat, the best way to take off and land is with the drone facing away from you and from the stern. This way, if you let go of the controller, the drone will drift away and the obstacle avoidance sensors won't interfere either. Bring the drone down to the correct height before you bring it in and that way you only need to deal with the pitch and the roll of the drone. This also means that you can catch it yourself if you need to with one hand. Finally, use small stick movements. Go easy and relax. Man, look at that boat. It's five stories tall. It's incredible. Absolutely gigantic. Alright guys, we've got in, into the marina, had a sleep, a bit more alive now to be honest. Unless there's more boats coming in here tonight, this is a really pants way of uh, mooring. You know, the mooring balls aren't far enough out, so I've got one mooring ball either side of the boat, which really isn't ideal. I'll show you what I mean. So generally I'm actually hoping for more boats to come in on our starboard side just to provide a little bit of extra support so I don't have that boy bumping against the boat. But uh, first things first, just going to get showered, shaved and fooded up. Just enjoying the harbour now, just had some junk food actually uh, for lunch but um, yeah things are really busy actually here in Visby nowadays. There's a lot of people walking around it seems like um, COVID is becoming less of a thing, we'll see. But yeah, over the next few days, I think we're just gonna enjoy Visby, we're gonna see some friends here, and uh, maybe I'll take you on some adventures around the island, we'll see. Yeah, that's right, we're having some lighting competitions right now. <laughs> no, it's been a super chill day in Visby, had a nice meal on the opposite side of the marina, and uh, yeah. Things are good. Just gonna say good night now, and um, yeah, see you tomorrow morning. Over the next couple of days, I visited a friend a little further south down the coast in Tofta, and left Tanya and Mayana to have some quality time together. I can highly recommend visiting Gotland. There are some stunning places here. There are a few harbors around the island that are deep enough that we want to visit. As for anchoring, it looks fairly exposed on the map, but we do plan to come back and explore. Well, the docking situation is still a bit shit, actually. Um, 
one of the mooring boys is like buried almost underneath the boat and there's no support on the front and I've put a spring line on the side the winds coming in now into Visby at like 20 knots from the broadside so yeah a few boats around the uh, around the marina are actually getting a little bit damaged now because they're rubbing against the uh, the dock and things like that so it's it's not ideal with these really short boys Sarah and Mayanna have just joined the boat. Sarah flew in today. Mayanna the day before. The municipality of Gotland has approximately 25,000 inhabitants. It's one of the best preserved medieval city in Scandinavia with a lot of ruins like the 3.4 kilometer long town wall that surrounds the city. And inside the city you will find beautiful old church ruins. Alongside the coast of Visby you can find a number of different bunkers from the Second World War. Visby has been on UNESCO's World Heritage Site list since 1995. Gotland is a very popular holiday destination for all Scandinavians. But especially in week 29, it's a very popular week for people from Stockholm. And actually, it's the party week that's now named the Stockholm Week. In week 32, Visby is the center of the annual medieval week of Gotland. Unfortunately, we were leaving on the day it all began, but we did get to see them setting it all up. Just come down to the water now, just to uh, have a look at the sea state for tonight, because uh, right now the weather forecast is looking a little bit bad tomorrow. It's gonna be raining tomorrow, but we've got a great southerly wind coming in. Uh, it was a really hard westerly before, but now it's moving south. So, um, yeah, we're going to leave very early in the morning, probably about 4 or 5 in the morning. And then it's going to uh, take about 12 hours to get back to Stockholm, to a, an island called Uta. Um, so, yeah, I'm just making sure that the roll is not going to be too bad in a few hours, and it looks like it's settling down now. So, yeah, we... Uh, we make the crossing early tomorrow morning, but uh, I need to get some sleep soon before we, before we start sailing in the morning. 